Um, government is the maker of public policies through the process called politics. So we're looking at all three of these terms um, that kind of go um, together in the definition. So we're going to look specifically right now with government. Government is the maker. They are the ones that um, create the public policies. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are, where you are here in the United States, the machinery that is government touches almost or <clears throat> every single aspect of your life um, every single day. There's nothing that you've purchased. There's uh, driving. Um, it doesn't matter. Government has something to do with almost everything that you do. The fact that you're in school and taking this government class, that was a public policy. You cannot get through high school without taking U.S. government. So that is, um, once again, government. We know how many days we have to be in school, and there's all kinds of rules where that comes along. And actually, the school board is the smallest unit of government, um, so you can't get away from it. Um, Hopefully this gentleman is familiar to you, Barack Obama. Um, he is obviously the President of the United States and he is the 44th President. And that's not something you necessarily need to write down at this point, but please make sure that you know that Barack Obama is the President and eventually you will need to know that he is the 44th President. But um, obviously he is the head of the whole entire government. We'll talk about the executive branch later. This is a picture of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. This is where the um, Congress, Congress is responsible for making the laws. Um, and if one half of the building is dedicated to the House of Representatives and the other half of the building is dedicated to the Senate. Once again, you don't necessarily need to write that down. This isn't something that I'm going to test you over right now, but it is something eventually you're going to have to know. You look at your police officers, they're part of government. They're responsible for enforcing the laws and making sure that um, we have law and order. You have judges, um, which is actually part of, once again, government. So what we're looking at here are the three branches of government. The executive branch, represented by our president. Congress, the legislative branch, responsible for making laws. And then you have the judicial branch, which is our court system, and they're responsible for interpreting the laws. And once again, we're going to get to that um, information. <clears throat> you have the military, the Defense Department, once again, all of these um, components working together um, as part of our government, uh, this machinery. So the actual definition for government is an institution or an organization in society that has the power to make decisions and enforce rules for that society. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to look at is the product. If government is the maker, what is it that they make? And they make public policies. These are the choices or decisions government makes to respond to various issues in our society. Um, education. There are public, all kinds of public policies dedicated to education. If you think of No Child Left Behind and the constant talk that, about standards, state standards, um, or common core, all of these are public policies. These are all policies that have been created by our, by our government that we have to follow. Um, we have environmental issues. Um, we have the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, we deal with car emissions and what that does to our environment. Um, <clears throat> you know, the fact that you know, businesses can not pollute all that they want. Um, so there's all these public policies that are created to uh, help with the environment. We have public policies created on energy. Um, we have this dependence on foreign oil. So we're seeing, especially around our communities, just a little to the south in the Elwood area, um, we're going to see them in Grant County, uh, these wind farms popping up. And the government actually, you know, is, is doing um, what they think is best um, to try and deal with uh, energy issues, defense issues, military issues. Obviously, um, we don't just deal domestically or within the United States with issues. Um, we have bases throughout the world, and we get involved in a lot of different conflicts. Um, so there are public policies uh, dedicated to that. Immigration, that's always a um, 
controversial issue. Um, what kind of policies do we want on immigration, especially illegal immigration? What is it that we're going to do with the millions of illegal immigrants? And so they're constantly, our government is trying to figure out uh, what public policies and what different things that we're going to do uh, for this. And right now, if you want to take an opportunity and go ahead and stop this video, <clears throat> what I would like for you to do is to um, come up with um, three different public policy issues um, that are really, really um, at the forefront of government right now. Uh, try and, and, and I'm not thinking of anything in particular. There are several that um, are in the news quite a bit. But um, go ahead and take some time. If you need to Google public policy issues, or if you already know some and you don't need to stop, that's fine too. But I want you to look up some issues um, that the government is dealing with uh, currently. And this is an issue that you are going to do some research on. You're going to be blogging about this. Um, we're going to have some discussions over these issues. So make sure that you pick one that you want to spend the rest of the semester dealing with because you're going to be spending some time uh, dealing with this particular issue. <clears throat> okay, so government is the maker and their product is uh, public policy, but what politics is is the process that they go through. Um, politics is the process of making public policies decision. It's how the policies get made and it is a <clears throat> complicated, ugly, slow, frustrating process. If you watch the news at all, um, you'll know that nothing gets accomplished very quickly. Um, you have people of all kinds of different opinions, and so this is a very slow, complicated process. So I kind of put um, what's called a Rube Goldberg. If you've ever seen the, you know, you, there's the mousetrap game where you, you create these complicated processes to get to the final product. And that's what politics is. You have different political parties. You have people with different views. <clears throat> Some think the government is the answer to all of our problems and we need more government involvement. You have other people who think that the government should completely stay out of it. Um, so uh, one of the things that I'm going to ask you that I want you to uh, write about is, is it better to have a slow government process? one where with multiple sides and multiple opinions and all kinds of layers of government that takes it quite a bit of time to get anything accomplished. Is that better or would we be better off with a more efficient government? One where you have, let's say, one person who makes all the rules and says this is the way it's going to be. Um, we can get things done very, very quickly, but at what price when you only have one or a very small group of people? So that's one of the things that I want you to be thinking about um, and one of the questions that I'm going to ha have you uh, talk about in your discussion. <clears throat> so here in the United States, um, and especially at the creation of our government, um, the question was how did ordinary people fit into our system of government? And when our founding fathers were developing this type of government, um, you have to understand that this was really the first time in history that the focus was turned on to collectively the people and not just the king or the queen <clears throat> or a very small group of people. Um, when we look at when we start looking at the Constitution and this idea of the preamble, which is the very beginning of our Constitution, the first um, three words of our Constitution are we the people, and that is huge. We don't think much about it today, but when this was written, first time in history um, that we allowed almost everyone, and you know when we when we talk about that, obviously there were some people who were um, not allowed to participate in this process, but um, at this time it was the largest group of people who had ever been able to participate or to have any say so whatsoever in the type of government um, that they were going to have. The other thing I want you to make sure that you understand and that you write down is that we are the boss. Um, it's not the president and not Congress and not the judges. We are the ones that put these people in those positions. They work for us and I think a lot of people forget that. 
and we're going to talk at length about this idea of popular sovereignty. And popular sovereignty is the idea where um, the people have the power. And in order for this whole entire thing to work, we don't have monarchs here. We don't have kings and queens. Um, it's we the people. And in, once again, in order for this to work, everyone has to participate.